Now, there are some very big and very complicated questions to try to answer about the universe. And if you're a geek like me and we're a big fan of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, remember that uh, Deep Thought was asked, what is the meaning of life, the universe and everything? The answer was 42, <laughs> rather confusingly. Um, but one man who could hopefully shed a bit more light on it all is someone who's... I mean, world famous for the way that he could just make things accessible to all of us. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. And he joins me now. I'm so excited. It's really good to see you this morning. I mean, how do you even... Be how do you begin to break things down? I know you've got... In your new book, you're trying to make everything accessible to all of us. How do you even begin to tackle that? Well, thanks for that uh, Hitchhiker's Guide intro to this. Uh, here's, the, here's the difference between the Hitchhiker's Guide and this book. Uh, in, in that one, uh, the great question, uh, the, what is the answer to life, the universe, and everything, and it's 42. Um, and then you say, well, what, what, what? It, in the case of Cosmic Queries, it's a celebration of the questions, even more than it is a celebration of the answers. And if you take a look through the history of civilization and ask what are the deepest questions we've ever posed, those are addressed in the book. You know, how, how did it all get here? What's it all made of? Are we alone in the universe? How will it all end? And these are questions that, that grew out of a podcast that I host called Star Talk. One of the formats of the show is just called Cosmic Queries. And people, people ask, you know, all kinds of questions, but some of them were deeper than others. And those were collected for this book. And, and not all the questions have answers. And that's the, that's the fun part of it. Because as a scientist, you need to learn to love the questions themselves. I was going to say, with, this, with science, we like to think of science as being something where we get a definitive answer. But the more we delve into science, and particularly sort of astrophysics, I mean, the, the fewer answers we have. Yeah, there's a fun uh, expression to, cap to, to encapsulate that. It's, as the area of our knowledge grows, so too does the perimeter of our ignorance. And so, you know, it's like, wow, yeah, that's, kind of, that's true, isn't it? So as, as, as a scientist, when you're on the frontier, that's, that can be a very bleeding edge, you know, where you don't even necessarily know if you're asking the right question. Uh, I'll give a quick example. Uh, uh, probably the number one question, or number two question I get asked is, as an astrophysicist that I get asked is, what was around before the Big Bang? <laughs> and we have some ideas, but let me also pose the possibility that maybe the question has no meaning. And you'll say, well, of course it does. It's got the nouns and verbs in the right place, and it's got a question mark. So of course it does. No, wait a minute. Um, let's visit Santa Claus, all right? We all know he's on the North Pole. We say, Santa, which way is north? And every direction Santa points is due south. On the North Pole, the question, which way is north, has no meaning. And we know that, all right? So maybe what was around before the Big Bang has no meaning. We don't know that because we're on the frontier. Wow. I love that. I mean, it's, it's that sort of thing that just makes the brain melt a little, <laughs> a little bit, doesn't it? But, that, but, that's, but that's part of the joy of all of this. I mean, I think particularly for, for young people, I know this book is aimed at, at all ages, but for young people, their minds are somehow a little bit more flexible, aren't they, to get, to, to get, <laughs> get their heads around some of this? <laughs> that's, that's so polite to say that their minds are flexible, which is an indictment of the adult mind, <laughs> which is to say we are ossified in one way of thinking. This is, uh, this is why you need to not only learn to love the questions, um, I, I'd like to think of Cosmic Queries as a celebration of curiosity. And, and thanks for showing some of those images and the pages of the book. Well, that's a video, that isn't. But others were directly from the book, where um, this, the book is produced by National Geographic. So it's, a, it's beautiful. Um, there's also, just to keep you going, kind of rewards for getting past various pages. There's a series of tweets that were live, actual tweets that I had posted related to the content. And they're just fun things like, um, yes, you learn the universe is expanding, but that won't get you out of this traffic jam you're in, in the street. <laughs> you know, little things just to, like biscuits, to, to help you, guide you through the book. But um, yes, the, 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 
the, the depth of the frontier exists at all levels in chemistry and biology and physics, astrophysics, and, and it's all there. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's really of science that we, we spend a lot of time uh, looking at the very smallest parts of, uh, of what, is, what we have, what exists, and at the same time, applying that to the furthest outreaches of, of what we can see. And somehow, I mean, I don't, I don't quite know how, but it does all sort of tie together, doesn't it? I mean, it's the whole sort of quantum theory and quantum entanglement and all this sort of stuff, which I, I'd love to read about but still don't understand. Yeah, so uh, you, you mentioned a very important point, and it didn't have to be this way. It's you, you're on a tabletop, you perform experiments and establish sort of the laws of chemistry and physics. And, and then you look out in the universe and say, hey, that's happening there too. The, the same chemical elements on Earth are on other planets, on other galaxies. Hey, the laws of gravity that we experience here are controlling the large scale universe. Now, it, I suppose it didn't have to be that way. Everything on Earth could have just been unique to Earth, and we might still have science, but it would be a very local activity. So, um, uh, you know, as, as we say, on Earth as it is in the heavens, right? It, it is, it's throughout. And that's remarkable, and it empowers us to not only have thoughts about the nature of the universe, but to address them and answer them with some kind of confidence. I wonder, what do you think we've lost over the years? Because one thing that always, I've always found fascinating is when you look back to some of the ancient civilizations, and then there's the pyramids and the, the Incas and all these sort of things where they, they seem to have had this, this um, sort of astronomical understanding, which is incredible. We can't work out how, how they knew so much when they did. Do you think we sort of lost some knowledge along the way? Well, first of all, they were still human, right? They weren't, like, not human. Oh, so, or were they? So or what they, you say, I have to say, I'm a, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a conspiracy theorist with that. I do wonder. Yeah, it is, it, is, it is weird that people go to Africa, find pyramids, and rather than credit Af Native Africans for making it, they'll say, oh, the aliens helped them, all right? That's... <laughs> <laughs> That's being very, you know, Eurocentric on that one. Um, <laughs> but yes, the, the and by the way, not everyone presumably designed the pyramids. You had the brilliant few among them who were the engineers and the architects and this sort of thing. And like I said, they were human like us today. So they had the same curiosities, the same capacity to solve a problem. They just had less technology. So it took them way longer to build a pyramid than we it would take us to build it today, I, I think. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I'm delighted that the science and the architecture, and in many cases the art, is almost what we define as the arc of civilization coming forward. And, and politicians are long forgotten and all other aspects of society, but what have you built? And what, what were your philosophy? How did you think about the world? These are the things that have shaped who we are and ultimately where we're going. If we, if we are wise shepherds of the scientific powers that we have gleaned. Wow. I mean, I love the fact I would talk. I did sort of think maybe we'll get some answers. You've left me with more questions, which I think is the whole point of the book as well. <laughs> it's, it's such a joy to talk to you. Thank you so much indeed. Excellent. Thank you for having me.